Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This episode is about low frequency amplifier response for the field effect transistor amplifier. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the input critical frequency for an FET amplifier, shall we? So remember, when you're looking at this here, we have, let me just draw a dotted line around it here. You have a different, amp, uh, different transistor, don't you? It's a field effect transistor, right? When you have a field effect transistor, you're going to have a source. You're going to have the drain, which is on this side. And you're going to have the gate, which is over here, right? So those are the three inputs, obviously, for your FET transistor. And if we're going to look, well, just looking at this amplifier, you can see you have two RC circuits, don't you? You have one here, and this is your output. And you have one over here. And this is your input, right? So let's just look at your input here. Input FCL. All right, so if we redraw this, we're basically going to have an input. This is your signal. You're going to come in. You're going to go through what? Through a capacitor. Then you have a resistor directly to ground. And then you're coming right in, and this is going to be to your gate, or yeah, I'll call it your gate, but it's your input to your transistor. And I'm going to draw that here, and I'm going to call that RN gate. Now, you may recall that the input resistance of your gate is very, very large. So, this total resistance, as you can see right here, that total resistance, or Rn, Sorry, I gotta get back to the right color there. All right, let's draw this again. R in is going to be equal to RG in parallel with R in of your gate. All right. Now the input resistance, you may recall this as well from your FET, your study of the FET transistor. Rn of your gate that's going to equal voltage of your gate source divided by the current through your gate yeah. And this is going to be your source shorted by GSS. Absolute value, so it's always going to be a positive number. So to calculate this, usually you're going to get this value and this value from your data sheet for the FET transistor. Then you can calculate what this is. Now practically, this number is so large most of the time it's simply neglect neglected. However, there may come a time when you don't want to neglect it, right? And finally, if you want to get your 
critical lower frequency here FCL that's going to equal 1 divided by 2 pi and then that your, your resistance now comes in right so it's going to be RG in parallel with RN of your gate times your capacitance there. I can call this C1 and I'll just make this C1. And as before, remember, resistance is in ohms. This is going to be ohms. Capacitance, that's going to be farads. And your frequency, that's going to be in hertz. All right, everyone. Let's try the output frequency next. All right, so what I did here is I moved the input critical frequency formula right here. So now we can concentrate. We have space. We can concentrate on the output, right? That's going to be the output FCL, right? So when you look at this, what do we have as the output? We basically have your load resistor. I'm actually coming back the other way, aren't I? We're going through your capacitor. This is your output capacitor which is right here, okay? Make the capacitors just a little longer there. Now these are going to come into your circuit. You're gonna have your sister coming up here to VDD. And this is RD, isn't it? And now this part right here comes into your transistor, doesn't your FET, right? And then you have the rest of it that's going to ground. The point is, is this part right here, just like we did in the other, the, the bipolar junction transistor, all of this, let's rewrite this. This is basically What's this equal to, right? It's basically equal to the current source, right? Now we're looking at the AC, right? We're talking about AC here. AC, because remember VDD is gonna look like a ground AC, right? It's gonna look like AC ground. So this, and then you're gonna have this and this is going to be what? RD. Right? And then this is going to come through your capacitor. And then you're going to go through. This is going to be RL. Right? Now look at this part. You have a current source and you have that resistor in parallel with it. Let's redraw it again. And I'm just going to draw this down here with a little. This is going to be equal to what? It's going to be identical to that's RD. What are we doing? coming through your little capacitor here and then we're going to come to RL to ground right and this is your C we'll call it C2 right we'll like this one C2 alright so as before, in this case, your critical frequency is going to be equal to 
FCL, and this is your output we're talking about. This is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi RD plus RL times C2. All right. And this is your equation for the output, the lower critical frequency for your output, all right? So now you have two of them, right, in this case for this amplifier. You have one here for your input, and you have one here for your output. You only have two RC circuits here, so you're only going to have two uh, in this amplifier you only have two RC circuits so you're only going to have two critical frequencies all right now let's do something here real quick let's just get some space here I want to emphasize something with you all right we'll be up here We'll just call you the output. Now, in case you didn't see the episode or the video regarding the bipolar junction transistor amplifier and figuring out the crit lower critical frequencies for that amplifier, for the FET amplifier, the, this is common to both amplifiers, right? If you have a Bode plot, and if you're not familiar with a Bode plot, there's another video here which describes a Bode plot. But a Bode plot basically has your amplitude here in decibels, and it has your the frequency here on this axis. It's in log. Okay. Now, this is in logs, but here's the I want to show you. If, if that, if this is your mid-range frequency here, mid-range frequency is going to be your amplification once you are above the critical, the lower critical frequency, right? Suppose you have a critical frequency here and here because there's two RC circuits suppose you're going to have two critical frequencies right so I'm going to draw this in a different color here's your mid-range right here's your mid-range and if you bring this up why don't we call this a uh, thousand Hertz You're going to then, you're going to have a, an elbow down here, right? You're going to start coming down at 20 dB per decade, right? And suppose this one here, this is at 100 hertz. Now you have a straight line, a slope here that's a straight line. It's going to come down, but and this is at 20 dB per decade. At this point, when you reach the next lower frequency, your frequency is going to change. I'm sorry, your slope is going to change. And now this slope is going to be 40 dB per decade. All right. Now remember, what's this saying? This saying, this is saying that any f signal that is below, where is my? Uh, I want to see. There is any frequency down in this area coming in here. It's going to be uh, reduced. It's going to be attenuated significantly. 
obviously it's going to be attenuated here below your mid range right at 20 dB but here it's going to go and when you have three it's at 60 dB per decade it's an, an immense attenuation in your signal that's coming in that's going to be amplified so this is why it's so important to know what the frequency is on these critical frequencies are because you got to make sure if you have a frequency of interest you want to make sure that your frequency of interest is in here right in here to wherever it's going on or wherever the upper critical frequency and that's another discussion but if your frequency is below here it's not going to make if your frequency is in this range right here it's not going to make it through your amplifier all right this is very powerful because now you can amplify signals of specific frequencies if you want right and what's what's interesting suppose some of these resistors they even have capacitors that you can adjust. You can adjust those values with knobs. In doing that, you can make this value here in your denominator. I'm talking about the output here, I could also do the same thing for the input. If you could, you could vary it, that means you could train change your critical frequency either upper or lower as you wish. Fantastic, huh? This stuff is so interesting, isn't it? You can think of so many things to do it, especially with music and sound and things. Well, anyway, I hope this was helpful to you, and I will see you on the next video. Bye now.